Hi, so yeah, my name's Tonya Thomas. I'm the new Senior Research Officer for the GTFCC Country Support Platform. Um, I joined in June, so still relatively new to this. Um, just a quick overview of what I'll go through today. So um, I just wanted to go through some background um, information on um, the development of this role and the research work stream, um, the kind of current um, perspective around research for the GTFCC. Um, thinking about research uptake for case management um, and then and then onwards for next steps. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with the country support platform, um, this was established as the operational arm for the GTFCC. Um, the idea, I think, was agreed upon in around 2019 and it, it's, it's taken a, a couple of years to, to develop, but it's been fully operational since 2021. Um, the Secretariat for the CSP is hosted by IFRC in Geneva, um, it's part of the Health and Care Department. Um, and this is just a quick overview of, of our team. Um, so the coordinator at the moment, Annika, is on maternity leave and actually uh, Abhishek from Bangladesh is, is the acting uh, coordinator. Um, but there are a couple of um, people based here in Geneva, so we've got Emmett that's sitting with us today, um, and then Jane, also the advocacy um, and resource mobilization um, senior officer is, is based in Geneva as well. Um, we have the program managers who are based in each of our focus countries, so they're listed along the bottom, and we have Joseph here from Zambia with us today. Um, and my role here, um, you can see maybe uh, a little bit complicated because I'm actually based in London at the British Red Cross and I'm seconded to IFRC in Geneva. Um, and there was also some previous discussion around the role potentially being part of the GTFCC Secretariat. Um, so I work very closely with the Secretariat whilst sitting within the CSP. Um, so that's why I wanted to show how that actually uh, uh, looks in a diagram here. Um, so just again, for those of you who are not familiar with the countries that we're working in at the moment, um, these are our five uh, focus countries, but we can also provide support for other countries. Um, and uh, you know, if anyone's interested specifically in research support, that, but you're not from a country listed here, then please do reach out. Um, I just wanted to go over some background um, to the kind of research work stream as part of the GTFCC's work um, because it, it, it hasn't just started now. Um, so I think the, the kind of recognition for a dedicated work stream around research um, was agreed upon in 2018 at the fifth GTFCC annual meeting. Um, and since then, there's been a fair amount of activity, um, but it has taken some time to get to this point where you know we have a dedicated focal person um, and a budget to take this work forward. So in, in that period over the last five years, uh, the country support platform has been developed, as I just mentioned, and this role is now sitting within the, the CSP. Um, the Wellcome Trust also funded the development of the GTFCC research agenda, which was published in January 2021. Um, and I'll go through that in a bit more detail um, later on. Um, and we, they've also created the GTFCC research tracker, uh, which again, I'll, I'll go into a, a bit more detail on um, later in the slides. Um, but this particular work stream and my role um, was initiated in June this year. And as I mentioned, I'm hosted by the British Red Cross. Um, and we have funding for three years for this, this uh, work stream. So hopefully we can um, you know, get some good work done in the next three years. So I don't think I need to convince this audience of the value of research, especially given how much of the conversation today has already um, you know, involved the presentation of research findings. Um, but one of the things that we really wanted to focus on um, for this area of work is how to ensure that the research that's happening um, is actually feeding into uh, the goals related to the, the cholera um, roadmap. Um, so it's, it's just kind of connecting up the research findings um, with those that are you know, trying to respond to cholera. And when I talk about research, I just wanted to clarify here um, that I don't just mean what we often think of as like traditional scientific research, which is often undertaken, you know, by big academic institutions with, um, you know, over multiple years with really in-depth um, protocols. That research is really important and we do need it, but we also really need operational research. Um, so this is, is, you know, research and data collection and monitoring um, of operational activities so that we can learn from, you know, the approaches um, and the interventions that we're using for cholera and feed that into improving how we respond. Um, so I just really wanted to flag here that, um, you know, 
uh, we see as much value in operational research um, as we do in these kind of gold standard traditional academic research studies. Um, so this is just a slide to give a kind of general overview of um, the objectives of this uh, GTFCC work stream. Um, and it's focused both at the global level and the country level. Um, so quite a broad scope of work. Uh, and I've already been told today that it's quite a daunting task, um, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, but yeah, two of these, um, the first two items on the, at the global level have already be begun, as I mentioned. So the cholera research agenda um, has already been published and, and we've started at least to try and track cholera research. Um, another thing we want to improve on is engaging with uh, re global um, research stakeholders, uh, making sure that we um, have plenty of opportunities to share knowledge at the global level. Um, and then obviously importantly engaging with research donors so that we can ensure that research funding um, is uh, prioritized to the areas where um, we know there are existing gaps. And then it's a similar kind of scenario at the country level. So um, we want to get a better understanding of what the country level research priorities are, because whilst we have the global research agenda, um, we also understand that there are likely to be country specific research questions that need to be addressed. Um, and this is an area where we think that operational research support will be really important. Um, and I've had already a number of discussions um, where I've been told there's lots of data that's been collected over many years um, through um, you know, various operational activities, but it's just never been analyzed. So um, yeah, this will be kind of looking at how we can support um, that process of analyzing that, uh, that data so that we can use uh, it to inform future programming. Um, connecting national and international researchers. Um, so this is something that uh, I think is really important. Uh, there's lots of research going on at the national level, but it, not, it may not be uh, necessarily plugged into the kind of international uh, research community. Um, and again, focusing on knowledge sharing and, and donor engagement at the national level as well. Um, so I'm sure those of you that have been around for a few years have, have already heard about the cholera research agenda that was published in January 2021. Um, but I wanted to recap it here because this is kind of the starting point um, for this work. So um, this diagram just shows the, the breakdown of the types of uh, people that contributed to the development of the cholera research agenda. Um, so this was done through a series of surveys um, which uh, help to prioritize a list of research questions. Um, and as you can see, the, there's a, a kind of quite a broad um, area of expertise across the, um, the people that participated in this, this exercise. Um, but you will notice that uh, case management is, is a little bit low uh, in terms of representation. There are about 10% of people that indicated that they had a specific um, uh, focus on, on case management. Um, however, ha having spoken to the team that uh, conducted this review, I understand that the case management working group were, were actively engaged in, in this work. So despite there only being 10% uh, of, um, of experts um, listed, I understand there was lots of engagement and I'm sure that there are you know, some people in the room that, that contributed to this exercise. Um, so just to recap on the, um, the, the research questions that were prioritized um, for case management, I'm not going to read them all out here, um, but I think some of the areas just listening to um, the, the conversation that's, that's been happening today, some, it, it's clear that some of these questions are still um, yet to be addressed. Um, and just for the, so these were the top five um, research questions that came out of uh, the case management pillar. Um, the bottom two were um, additional research priorities that came out for um, those experts that were engaged at the country level. Um, so the, there were some additional, <laughs> there were some additional questions that um, didn't make it into the final ranking, um, but that were still felt to be very important for those working um, in cholera endemic countries. Um, and, and two of those questions uh, included in that, that annex um, were related to case management as well. Um, so for the actual cholera research agenda, the final list of 20 research priorities um, actually 
included two case management um, questions, and those were the top one. Uh, so what are the barriers and enablers for integrating cholera treatment into community case management by community health workers? And actually the, the bottom one down here, um, so the role of community outreach uh, response teams. And I thought it was um, quite interesting that the two case management research priorities that made the final list were, were community-related um, priorities. Um, I don't think we have time to discuss this in detail today to really review um, you know, where we're up to uh, against each of these questions and, and, and how uh, relevant they still are two and a half years down the line. Um, but it is something that as um, you know, we continue to work together, I do really want to try and understand um, whether these priorities are still representative of the kind of current um, gaps in research um, and whether there are any additional um, priorities that, that we should be thinking about. And also, I just wanted to mention that at the moment, the cholera research agenda is only available in English on the GTFCC website. Um, but I'm working with the Wellcome Trust to get that translated into French so that soon we will have um, that available on the website in French. Um, so the other tool that was developed um, in 2021 was the cholera research tracker. Um, and this is also available on the GTFCC website. Um, it's essentially a, um, a search tool, um, so you could go on there and look for um, completed or ongoing research studies. And you can filter it by a number of different things, so you can filter by um, pillar, so you could filter by case management, um, you can filter by country, um, and you can see uh, what studies are, um, you know, are registered uh, in, this, in this tracker. Um, and the aim for this tool um, is just to try to kind of raise awareness of, of what research is happening um, and also to understand if you're working in a particular country um, and you might want to connect with researchers that are interested in similar um, areas that you can identify them through this. Um, once the, the studies are finished, um, the publications are also linked on here. Um, but whilst that, that's a very useful tool, it's only as useful as the amount of data and studies that are put into it. And at the moment, we only have 62 projects registered. Um, so we know that there's a lot more than 62 projects um, being undertaken at, uh, you know, across all the many countries um, that we work in. So um, if you do have uh, an ongoing research study or if you know others who are working on uh, cholera research, um, I would really encourage you to register it here so that we can try to um, you know, make sure that we're all aware of, of what's happening um, in terms of cholera research. Um, I thought it would be useful to show this, um, this slide. So this is essentially a summary of um, the funding which has been going towards cholera research over the last few years. Um, I do want to just caveat this slide with the fact that it only covers four of the major funding bodies, and we know that there are lots of other um, you know, research funders that are not covered by this. Um, and this map, when I presented it last week in Kinshasa, actually um, prompted lots of discussion because of the limited um, you know, resources that are going directly to cholera endemic countries. Um, that doesn't mean that the research isn't happening in those countries. Um, this is only capturing um, the institutions who are the lead investigators on the research. So what it actually shows is that, um, you know, still um, most of the lead investigators are based in, um, you know, countries outside of those where the actual research is, is happening. Um, we can see there's been a slight decrease in the number of um, research projects funded in the last few years. Um, which may be due to COVID and you know resources being redirected um, there. But one of the one of the things that we really want to do with the the research agenda um, and you know better kind of tracking of research um, is to influence you know where this funding is going, both in terms of you know like location as well as um, topic areas. Um, so yeah, this is just again um, to please. Uh, <laughs> flag that uh, we have this tracker and um, you know we it's only as useful as the the information that's put into it so um, yeah the slides will be shared afterwards and if you uh, if you know of ongoing research it would be great if you could include that here 
Um, so that's kind of what's happened up to now, um, up to the point that I started. Um, but what would we like to see going forward? Well, the idea is that with this list of research priorities, whether that's at the national level or at the global level, that we can um, influence uh, you know, researchers to start looking at some of those research questions. Um, we then want to take the, the research findings and rather than just you know, publishing a paper in a journal, thinking about how else we can translate that knowledge um, to make it easier for people to use. Um, and then we want to see that influencing um, you know, operational activities. Um, and then again, kind of, you know, this is a cycle. So those uh, who are um, you know, working in the field, um, thinking about challenges that they might be facing that they would like uh, answers to, um, you know, different questions, that those are then being fed back in um, to, you know, help us to, to identify more research gaps and priorities. Um, and yeah, the last thing I wanted to, to really mention on this is that um, this is just obviously one of the, the technical pillars um, for the GTFCC and there are others. Um, but one thing that I've noticed today is that, you know, there's a huge amount of crossover. And I think this is particularly true for research, um, that it's really important that, you know, we look across all of the, all of the pillars together, um, you know, to be able to answer some of the most challenging questions. And this is a final slide just on, you know, how, how are we going to do this? Because it is quite a big task. Um, well, the first question, and this is the, the part that I'm just focusing on at the moment, um, is just really getting an understanding of like, how are things working now? Um, you know, trying to get an overview of the existing research, um, both at the global and country level, um, identifying those key stakeholders um, that we can work with to engage on research uptake, um, and also, working with those that are developing NCPs at the country level and thinking through how operational research can be a component of that, um, you know, to support the more effective uh, cholera interventions. Um, so that's kind of the first question and I hope over the next, uh, you know, few years we can go on to, um, you know, try and improve how we're doing things, look at how we can work better, um, how the CSP and the GTFCC can support with this kind of work um, and then thinking about implementing this sustainably because, um, you know, at the moment it's, it's funded for three years. So the idea with incorporating it into things like the NCP process is that, you know, it will be continued on if we can show the value of it going forward. And that's it from me. I hope that I've uh, left you with time to go for drinks, but I'm happy to answer any questions now. And also, um, <laughs> if you want to talk to me over a drink, I'm also very happy to do that.